Welcome to the next installment of Know Your O's with Dan Connolly here on BaltimoreBaseball.com. And we're here with right-handed pitcher of the Baltimore Orioles, Tyler Wilson. First of all, Tyler, how good does that introduction sound? Yeah, it's awesome, man. There's uh, nothing better than having a professional team attached to you like the Baltimore Orioles. So, so you know, I, one of the things I like to talk to is kind of get the background of some guys. And uh, for you, it's kind of interesting because you come from an athletic family, your, your brother, your father. Um, tell me a little bit about that and, and kind of, I guess we'll start with your, your father and, and his professional baseball career. Absolutely. Uh, my dad was drafted and played in the San Diego Padres organization um, out of high school, out of Bethel High School um, in Hampton, Virginia. And then my brother now is fin just finished his second year uh, playing baseball at the University of Virginia. Um, he's redshirted. He had to redshirt his first year and he's still kind of recovering from labrum surgery. But uh, I've been fortunate that baseball has been the family for a long time. Your dad was a pitcher, correct? He was a pitcher. He was a pitcher. He get it. He actually got drafted as an outfielder um, and could always run, but then he just became a pitcher. And, and unfortunately, some injuries set him back, ankle injuries, actually, and he, uh, he didn't get to fully chase his dream. Now, in the Wilson family, however, there's actually a, uh, an athlete that got maybe a little bit more uh, prestige than the rest of you, um, and that would be Chelsea Shine Wilson, your wife. Uh, who is a four-year starter at University of Virginia in basketball, two-time, uh, two-year captain, and uh, and I guess does she still hold the record for most uh, most games played, she, men or women? Yeah, she does. So Chelsea played for four years, um, had a, had a great career. She was kind of a stretch four, could shoot the ball a little bit, but was more of a finesse player in the post. Um, she wasn't quite as big as some of those other girls she had to match up against. But um, I always loved watching Chelsea play. We met. Um, her third year, before her third year, and my last year in college, um, we had known each other prior to that, but that was when we really started getting to know one another. And I've always loved college basketball, and she just really exposed me to the female side of the game that I probably wasn't um, as educated in prior to meeting her. Did you pay attention to, to women's college basketball before you met her? I mean, did you know a lot about it or a little bit, bit about it? I knew a little bit. I knew a little bit. I mean, I think everybody kind of knows the the Yukons and the Tennessees and the Baylors and all that, obviously. Um, and I definitely followed it. Well, Chelsea's roommate in college was a girl named Monica Wright, who was actually the second overall pick in the WNBA draft. So she was a really big deal, probably arguably the greatest player to ever come out of Virginia, her, Don Staley, who's coaching at um, South Carolina now. But so I always followed it. I loved um, UVA sports in general, so I always knew what the team was up to. Um, but I obviously took a, a much uh, more special liking to it once I uh, met my wife. Now, you're obviously a very competitive guy, and it's one of the things people talk about, you know, you and, and how competitive you are and how you don't like to lose. Do you ever play pickup basketball with her? Yes, and this is, a, this is an age-old debate that her and I always go back and forth. When she was playing and she was in her prime, she took me down. I'll, I will absolutely admit it. Uh, but she, uh, she hasn't shot around too much lately. She's, um, she's busy with work and, and raising money for the university and uh, bouncing back and forth to see me. So um, she hasn't been able to get in the gym as much as she probably would like to. But she's a stud. Uh, don't let her <laughs> fool you. She's a, you know, a tall and lanky thing, but she'll get in there and throw some elbows with you. And she, she knows how to put the ball in the hoop. So she took me down a few times. Now you're listed as 6'2". She's listed as 6'2". Who's taller? She is. She uh, is. To be gener <laughs> yeah, generous. 6'2 is probably generous for me. I'm definitely more of a 6'1 guy, um, and she's a legitimate 6'2". So. Um, she's got me by a little over half an inch or an inch or so, but she's a really good sloucher, so it makes <laughs> me feel good about myself when I'm walking around with her. Now, um, she, you, you mentioned she's working for the, for the uh, university now, but she's also done a little TV. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about that, and does she give you any pointers on interviews and that kind of stuff <laughs> on what you need to do? No doubt. I sit there and watch her game tape and uh, learn how to be in front of the camera, but she's, she's done that. She's dabbled a little bit in broadcasting, and and communications was kind of what she really enjoyed um, and what she wanted to do when she was in college and she just didn't she ended up taking a job of fundraising like I talked about out of school and now she's just done this freelance and she works a little bit for ESPN and 3 and Raycom and and some other um, you know I guess private stations within the comp within separate conferences but she travels around a lot and she she loves basketball I love basketball it's been um, it's a cool experience in the off season where she spends all baseball season kind of traveling around to see me and then the off season gives me an opportunity to to follow her around and let her be the one on the road. And she goes all over the place. You know, basketball's taken her everywhere, just as baseball has done the same for me. And um, she's really enjoyed it. I enjoy watching it, and it definitely keeps me in tune with the uh, with the ladies' game of college hoops. Now you talked about her communications. Um, you were a biology major. 
in a, in a Spanish minor, which is kind of interesting. Um, but also, you kind of wanted to be a doctor, right? If, if you weren't a baseball player, would you have been a doctor? What kind of doctor? And is that, are those plans still in the back of your mind? Those, those are my two dreams when I, when I kind of set out for college. Um, from a young age, my parents instilled academics in me and, and how important they were and, and how important getting a degree was. It's something I always promised my parents I would get. So fortunately, I ended up staying for four years and, 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 go, and getting my degree. And going in school, you know, baseball was not necessarily a pipe dream, but something that I didn't know if was ever going to become a, a possible long-term career option. And so, yes, I studied biology, pre-med, and um, wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon just to be able to stay involved in the game and, and do Tommy John's or labor, whatever that uh, you know, whatever that dream would have ended up leading to. But um, it was a challenge, and that's something that I definitely still have a passion for, and, and it's a way to help people. It's a way to, to interact with people. That's I would say that's the, my bottom line passion is just being around people and helping others, and so that was the most tangible way for me to be able to express that. So. Uh, Medicine and med school are definitely on the back burner right now. Obviously, I'm trying to enjoy every second of this as much as I, for as long as I possibly can, and and who knows what post baseball life will uh, will bring. Did you take your your MCATs? I never took the once I got drafted. Um, MCATs are good for it's either two or four years. I'm not positive for how long they were, but I knew that I was going to give baseball a fair shake and. Um, you know, I probably would have taken a year off to to at least prep for the MCATs had baseball not been an option. So I just never, I never even took them. I never even dabbled. I would love to go back and, you know, kind of test myself a bit, I guess. But I'd probably end up embarrassing myself more than testing it. Do you mess around with uh, Darren O'Day when it comes to that? He, uh, you know, he obviously also right. had some thoughts about being a doctor yeah, as no well. No doubt. I mean, Darren's obviously uh, one of the most intelligent guys I've met in baseball, and, and he's fun to really talk about other things in life. Um, with outside of baseball and talk about you know his ambitions in medicine I think he took the LSATs as well I think he lost a bet for that but um, just in general he's such a smart guy and, and it's really good to have um, such intelligent people in general around the locker room that we can talk about things outside of baseball and you talk about being a sports guy and you know maybe your major passion is college basketball as, as much as it is baseball where did that develop and uh, and you know did it, did it foster even more once you got to the University of Virginia Definitely. I, I love college basketball, like you talked about, and um, I've always loved basketball since I was young. I mean, obviously baseball is the, my true love, I guess, as a sport, but I just really enjoyed the game. I like the pace of the game. I like the uh, the way that it's played. I was never any good, and obviously, um, as we discussed, my height and my physical attributes weren't going to lead me to having any type of career in, uh, on the hardwood, but I just love the game. And, and once I got to University of Virginia, um, my, the passion really grew from there. Um, they've done such a great job with the program there, and obviously bringing in Tony Bennett, you know, six years ago has really changed the face of that program. And you know, that was around the same time that I met my wife. So I think that was probably when the real passion. I mean, I don't miss a minute of either female or men's UVA basketball all year, and I just, I just enjoy it. I enjoy pulling for the kids. I think that the, they have a, a solid precedent for what they represent within the program, and then how they raise those guys and and what type of kids that they have in the program. So I'm just excited to be a part of it in any way I can. Now the Cavs were a number one seed, obviously, and uh, did not make it to the end. Did you have any bracket that didn't happen with them last year? Absolutely not, man, absolutely <laughs> not. I thought this past year was a year. Every year is the year for them, and who knows what could be this year. I know they lost a lot, but they're bringing in some studs. I think they have four top 70 recruits, which is more than they've ever had um, in uh, Tony Bennett's tenure since I've been following the program. So. Uh, yeah, it stunk to to watch them bow out a little bit early, especially to another team in the ACC. But you know, that's the way it goes, and that's what's college. That the parody in college basketball is a part of why I enjoy it so much. I think, and you know, it's fun to root for the underdogs. It's fun to root for the guys that nobody else is pulling for. And there's so much of that in the tournament every year, which is why I think people take such a keen liking to it. But you know, I don't like the underdogs when my team's a big dog on top that goes down. So. Um, now, I read something that's kind of interesting. Uh, filling out the bracket actually sort of kind of led to you uh, asking your wife to marry you, right? And wasn't there, there a part of that where there was a kind of a connection there? Yeah, so, well, my wife and I, we fill out brackets every year, and we have ever since we've known each other, and we just we place friendly wagers um, on the brackets. I don't think it ever led to, you know, me putting, if you win this bracket, I'll propose <laughs> right, right. to you, but, uh, you know, it, we usually wager something on the lines of who cooks dinner, a special type of dinner that... The other one would prefer or 
has to take him on a shot. I had to take Chelsea on a shopping spree one year. I remember that for losing. She's a tough. She is. She's tough. She gets me every year pretty much in those brackets. But I've got a streak going right now. I'm going to try and ride out for a little bit. Well, wasn't it, from what I read, wasn't it that the one of the special things was a special day out, and that was the day that you proposed Oh, for? yeah, exactly. So that was – she wanted an adventure for one of her brackets, and I, and I lost – Fortunately, in this case, and I ended up taking her on, um, well, actually her friends, I had her, her best friends involved in this, and they took her to different spots around um, Charlottesville that had significant importance in our relationship, like first place we met, our first date, um, our first kiss, things like that, wherever, uh, and there was a, a different friend waiting for her at each location, and so they read her a letter, um, some things that I, a letter that I had written, and eventually led to the place where um, all our friends brought her out to where I was waiting for, where I proposed for her to her. So, yeah, it actually did play a role in, in us getting together, I guess. How cool has this whole experience been being with the Orioles? And, and, you know, I mean, it's obviously something you worked really hard to do to get here and now be part of this team. Oh, my gosh. It's so special. I mean, anytime you can um, work towards a goal and, and achieve it um, is, is an unbelievable feeling. I mean, in any capacity, whether it's a short-term goal as far as, you know, getting 100 on a test or... Um, you know, breaking a certain time in a running competition, anything like that that you can work towards and there's a tangible measure, a tangible achievement at the end, it's always very gratifying. But um, so for that reason, I'm so thankful for the opportunity that it is to be here every day. And, and I try and take every day as an opportunity to, uh, to really enjoy it, to something special and to, to try and get better and to, to not take any of it for granted because it can all be taken away in a second. And, and I'm fully cognizant of that. So um, my time here in Baltimore, as short-lived as it's been, has been truly special. It's uh, my road to hoe and getting here in my career in professional baseball and before that um, has taught me so many important things about life. And, uh, and that's something that I wouldn't trade for the world. And it's helped shape me into who I am and, and the perspective that I have in this life. So um, I'm grateful to the game for that. And I'm grateful to the Orioles for um, allowing me to achieve that dream.